In today's YouTube video, we're going to be breaking down how to pass the ball from a single back wing flex close formation in the Las Vegas Raiders offensive playbook. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, maybe this is your first video that you've ever seen that I've done. I want to let you know what my channel is about. My channel is all about Madden 21 tips and tricks videos. We break down different strategies, different schemes, different uh, money plays, both on the offensive side of the ball and on the defensive side of the ball to help you be more effective as a player in Madden NFL 21. And so in today's video, um, I'm having a little bit of fun. I'm working on something out of the Las Vegas Raiders playbook um, with some single back wing flex close stuff. We did a video earlier today um, that talked a little bit about the running formations and now we're going to talk about the passing formations. Now, real quick, before we go any farther, if you are interested in our content, I would go ahead and ask that you click the subscribe button. But one of the other things that I wanted to highlight right as we jump in here is my text message membership. Now, for those of you that don't know what my text message membership is, it's completely free. And all you have to do is basically text me to sign up for it. Um, my cell phone number is 812 216-3644. It is in the top left-hand corner of your screen that you're watching um, your video on. It's also in the description. Now, what do you get with the text membership? What is the value for it? Why should you sign up for it? Here's why I think everyone that watches my video should sign up for the text message membership. What you see on my YouTube channel is only a part of what I actually do. Um, I write Madden 21 eBooks. I have a Discord of over uh, 600 members that talks Madden 24-7. We run a CFM on PlayStation 4, and we're working on starting one up for Xbox. But out of everything that I do, my favorite thing is my text message membership, and here's why. Because I think it allows you to get the most value um, out of, out of um, my content and my channel. What we do is every single week we sit down and we give you guys some kind of high level update. Maybe it is a video that teaches you every single thing that you need to know about the shotgun bunch out of the Carolina Panthers playbook. That video was over an hour and some of the comments on it was that this video was better than some of the ebooks that they have purchased for the gun bunch. Maybe it's a big nickel over G defensive breakdown where we spent over an hour and 45 minutes breaking down why the big nickel over G is probably one of the best defenses for forma defensive formations in Madden 21. And the same thing was said about uh, the text membership there. One of the guys said, I don't even know why I buy eBooks anymore from other sites because this is the most in-depth breakdown I've ever seen on the big nickel over G. The reason that I'm saying that is not to toot my own horn and to say that I'm better than anybody else. It's simply to tell you that what you get with that text message membership is a lot of very, very good content. We just released a New England uh, Patriots offensive guide. You can pick it up in the description if you're interested in getting that. Um, I believe it's the most balanced offense in Madden 21. But for my text message members, what we did is we put together over an hour of a sample formation from straight from the ebook um, out of the gun a slot offset formation, breaking down literally everything that you can do um, from that specific formation. So if you're interested in it, I would highly encourage you just to go ahead and shoot me a text. It is my personal cell phone number, so no gimmicks, no no uh, bait and switch here. Just shoot me a text message. Let me know if you want to receive the, the videos. And the other thing that I really like about it is it gives you a direct line to me. You can ask me any Madden question at any time, and I will do my best um, to answer it and to get back with you and talk Madden uh, with you guys. So it's probably the favorite thing that I get to do um, is just basically have uh, all you guys texting in, talking, asking questions, and uh, it's just been awesome. Now, um, enough of that. Let's jump into uh, single back wing flex close. Now, single back wing flex close, I, we talked about earlier, is really, really good passing or a really good running formation. But I think it's a just as good, if not better, passing formation. And we already said that most of the time, the defenses that you're going to get from this, you're going to have to get some type of nickel. You're not going to get dime, guarantee you. If they give you a dime look, run the ball, right? Don't even waste time. Just run it. So they're not probably going to give you a dime look. What they're probably going to do is they're going to give you either a nickel look or a 3-4, four, 4-3 four, type of look. We're going to, I believe that nickel is the best way to play defense. That's why in our 4-6 defensive ebook, we focused in on the nickel 3-3-5, 3-3-5 wide, and nickel normal, and big nickel over G. Now, obviously, we did stuff from the 46 and the 34 bear, but the primary focal point from that guide was those couple of formations. 
So I believe you're going to get a lot of nickel. So we're going to show this out of nickel 335 normal um, because I believe that out of all the nickel, that's the best pass defense from nickel. So anyways, the audibles, um, we're going to go through every pass. So you don't have to set these audibles. I'll give you the audibles that I would recommend um, as far as passing must have pass plays as far as versatility and everything in just a moment or uh, at the end of the video. Now for coaching adjustments real quick. We're going to put our zone drops at our curl flats at 20 yards. That's kind of a common uh, theme that you see. A lot of people put their zone drops at 20 yards. Some people put their hooks at five. Uh, but for this video, we're not going to do that. Um, and we're going to leave everything else at default. Now, I want you to notice here that auto flip is set to on. And we're going to set this to man align. This, in my opinion, is the best way to play the pass because you're going to get the best matchups. And uh, what you're going to notice right as we jump in here, um, I'm going to start with man coverage. And then we're going to work out of it. And I, I'm really excited to show you this um, this stuff out of man coverage and what it can do for you because you will see man coverage if you haven't already. So the play we're going to come out in, uh, we got these first couple four pass plays, and we did go over the halfback slip screen in the last video and showed you how to basically make that, I think, a little bit more effective. Um, we went over PA jet sweep as well. But the play that I want to start with is four verticals um, and, and just come out in that. Now, as a general rule, uh, one of the things that I would recommend that you do is to have a tight end apprentice and a slot apprentice. Chris Godwin, right, that's where I would want your slot apprentice. Now, if you don't have that, um, you really just need a slot apprentice. You don't have to have a tight end apprentice. It just makes it even better if you do have a tight end apprentice. So if you just have a slot apprentice, like maybe you're playing uh, regs, and you, you just need really the only ability you have to have, in my opinion, with this offense is a slot apprentice because a slot apprentice is going to allow you to do a lot of different things. Now, again, could you get could you get away with not having either? Yes, you could. But some of the plays that I'm going to show you um, that are a little bit more of the powerful plays does require either a slot apprentice or a tight end apprentice. One of the two. Um, I would recommend a slot apprentice. I think that's going to make the most bang for your buck out of this. And obviously, if you're playing mutt with this, um, you know, you could get a slot apprentice, a tight end apprentice, a backfield master, and a gunslinger quarterback and still have, you know, a decent offensive line. So so that's what I would recommend. Now, uh, what you're going to notice here is I'm, I'm typically going to run my twin, my two receivers, um, to the to the wide side of the field. You don't have to do that, but that is typically what I'm going to do. I'm going to run them to the wide side of the field just for the best possible um, spacing in this. Now, first and foremost, one of the things I want to show you here is – about alignment i want to talk about the alignment of the formation and how it can give you some advantages against uh when you go to pass the ball so what i'm going to do right here is i'm going to man align and i'm going to press and what you'll notice out of this is when you man align when you press the slot corner stays on the tight end now if i flip the play watch watch real quick i flip the play it's the same situation so what this means is when you're facing, and, and, and let me just show you really quickly so that we can continue this. If I go to nickel 55, why? It's the same thing. It's a linebacker on him, right? Now, real quick, one little test I didn't do on this, and I just want to show you. Typically, when there's a linebacker, that linebacker, as you see there, he doesn't press. So that's, that's kind of the key finding, I think, from the alignment perspective that is really going to help you guys get um, – get a little bit better bang for your buck out of this what you'll notice is if they try to press you because if i was playing something like this one of the things or one of the strategies that i think would be decently uh effective is to just press the two wide receivers on the left play mabel coverage on the right and basically you know see what happens right well with with what i'm showing you right here um they're not they're not going to um they're not going to do that. They're not going to be able to do that. They're not going to be able to press you. So that's why, like, this play stick has, I think, a lot of merit. You can do simple things, right? You have outside leverage, so you can just throw out routes all day long. Literally all day long. You could throw out routes for days out of this offense. Um, this little quick out to to this to this guy right here. Even if they have even if they have somebody in coverage on him, right, and they're shaded to the outside. The basic alignment of the formation is not going to allow. See, I'm just going to put Evans on an hour. Watch this. Just quick out and go. It's just a quick out and go. And the reason that I like that so much is it's, again, one of the things that I really like about this formation as a whole is its ability to attack the defense very, very fast. I want to be able to get the ball out and go. 
another little concept that I actually really like, and these are just kind of universal setups, really, before we dive too deep into the plays. I really like this little concept right here. Um, it doesn't matter, again, what play you're running. You could do it from stick. I like probably stick the best. Stick is kind of the play that I like to kind of freestyle a little bit out of. But basically, all you're going to do is you're going to have Evans on this little quick out, and then you're going to take Godwin on a little slant. And that quick out's going to serve as kind of a little pull route for the flat, and you can have those two quick reads. One of those two guys will beat man every single time. Now, most of the time when people are user guarding this and they're trying to stop your what you're what you're going to be doing, I have found that most people are going to either use or the the right inside tight end or the left inside slot receiver. Those are the two primary players that they're going to want to basically watch. Typically, it's honestly the right of screen inside slot tight end because what they're anticipating is that you're going to run a corner route or a post route to the tight end, and that's pretty much going to be your offense. You're going to throw corners and you're going to run the ball. That's not exactly what that's not exactly what you're going to get um, when you watch one of my videos. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more in depth into this, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, some of the things that you can do. So the first play that I want to go over is stick. Now, why stick is so effective, in my opinion. Is because these little option routes are actually really, really good, and because of the way that the flat routes are going to pull a lot of the zones out. Now, one of the things you will notice uh, pretty quickly here is that you could do different kind of motion snaps. So one of the things that I like to do from stick is I'll take my tight end on the right here, I'll motion him to the right, and then I'll put him on a, a zig. And then I'll just motion him back. And then from that point, I'm going to basically take my tight end in the middle of the field, and I will put him on a post route. For this specific reason, um, because what I'm going to do on this backside here, what I'm going to do on this backside here is I'm probably going to put Chris Godwin on a slant pattern just so that I can have, um, you know, multiple reads and I'm going to motion him to the left. Most people would think I'm going to snap it right there. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to motion him back inside and kind of snap as he's starting to set. And you'll see that that's that little motion slant will beat um, will beat the coverage. Now, as far as what's happening on the left side, and this is why uh, one of the things that I like to do is I'll take the back, especially if I'm running this, again, I'm running the twins receivers to the wide side of the field. If I have backfield master, I will run that back on a shoot flat so that he's going to threaten that flat, and we'll show you what that looks like here from stick. But what you'll see is he's going to kind of threaten that same um, area. So you could put him on a swing route because against zone coverage, um, he's not going to be, be that great against man unless they just forget him. But against zone coverage, what's going to happen is um, that running back's going to pull all of those flats down to him, and you're going to have some really simple high-low reads. So let me show you this one more time. Uh, again, this is just man coverage. And part of the reason that I like to take – and you don't have to take Bright and put him on a – you can leave him on a flat. If you don't want to give a cue that you're putting him on a zig, that's fine. But I will tell you, even if people know he's on a zig, they relatively often will ignore his route. They really won't. You don't need Hot Route Master to put him on a zig or anything. It's just an automatic route that you get from that tight end. So, and, and we'll come back to these zigs. I think little zigs and quick hitches are really, really powerful from this formation. So anyway, you're going to put that slant out there. You're going to motion him out, and then you're going to come back in. And on the, on the right side, you're going to have this snap um, – snap throw zig and this has been something this has been a tactic that i have actually really liked for years in madden um and because of the fact that you can't put tight ends on zigs like just just because um unfortunately not very many people have used this tactic at least from what i've seen in competitive madden but this was an oldie but a goodie this was like back in oh gosh i mean this was forever ago that people were running this and with that back on the left side if you wanted to put him on a check release let's say you're worried about the pressure 100% understand that. Just put him on a check release. And I probably will do that. I'll probably honestly put the running back on a check release more than I'll put him on a swing route. But if you watch this tight end on the right, at the snap of the ball, because, again, we want these things to be quick. Watch this. Right inside, quick pass, secure catch. The alignment of this formation allows you to do that, and that's one of my favorite things about this offense. The alignment of this formation, because the twin tight ends, right, and because there's no receiver out there, it does not matter. It really, truly doesn't. You know, just put that inside tight end on some kind of in-breaking pattern. You know, if the tight, if the inside tight end was on a flat, you know, it might be a little bit weird. But overall, what you'll see, and you can you can basically hot route this entire play. 
right with your with your play with your players this is essentially what we're getting i just like to have that tight that that option right on the left side i think that option route does pretty good um another thing you could do if you wanted to go a little bit more max protect is you could take mike evans put him on a little whip route so now you have two snap throw zigs and these are just snap low ball whichever side the user's not on is going to be open whichever side and again it doesn't matter what play this is universal to this 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 formation um it, it's basically just saying if you just have a tight end apprentice and you want to beat pretty much every defense that they're going to be able to bring at you um you know if you had a back to a master i'd like to see like a block and release hook route or something just simple over the middle here but what you'll notice is on this left side watch this little pivot route because they can't press him remember they can't press that that receiver on the left so watch snap throw possession catch you have two snap throws on both sides of the field. Now, one thing you have to understand is where the user is going to stand pre-snap. Most of the time, that's telegraph. Most of the time, you know. So, for example, if you're facing nickel 55 wide, right, very popular defense, I'm going to stand right in here. Most of the time, I'm going to be kind of right over in this, in this area, right? So, all I'm doing is I'm watching that user snap the ball. And I'm going to ask the question, where does he go? Is he going to the right? Is he going to go to the left? That's pretty much the question that you need to know the answer to. Um, other than that, you're pretty much good. And you'll see these little quick snap throws right here. Snap throw inside possession catch. Five yards. Five yards. Five yards, guys. Um, it's super, super simple. But I'm telling you, it's really, really effective. It really is. Um, and we're going to build off of that concept. But but these snap throw zigs are tough. Um in my opinion, just quick, get it out there and go. And um, what you'll see here, I do want to show one other thing. What if they drop, right? This would be a, an interesting, this would be a tactic that somebody would employ. What if they drop their right of screen DN into like a hook zone? What happens then? Snap, throw, and you see he does, he does play that fairly well. But these are two window routes. Remember that these are two window routes. So what you're going to get now is you're going to get them dropping people out into, into coverage, right? So maybe on this left side, what you'll also notice, and again, they're going to have to drop both defensive linemen, right? So you're going to have plenty of time to throw. Because on this left side, uh, and again, we're just using the – we're literally just using a stick primarily for the little option route. So you could do this out of any play. And you see it does come with that stock route to um, – to your back as well um, so you can have that little feature so you really just need a tight end apprentice for this setup but what you'll notice is on that left side if i just want you to watch i'm going to take him put him on that zig again and i just want you to watch what happens with mike evans here snap low ball possession catch secure catch it four yards instantly even if they drop a guy it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to stop him so this is this is um, going to start to force them to bring people, bring people up in the box. They're going to have to play, you know, underneath coverage, and what that's going to do for your offense is it's going to open up um, the rest of this play for you, the rest of this, you know, basically drop back game that we've got. So, so now you've got this little again. This is just a little quick game. There's nothing too crazy about this. But what I want you to watch is now you've got, in my opinion, a very effective little post slant combo. Basically, whichever one the user doesn't take is going to be open. You see that post gets in behind a lot of yellow zones. He's also going to get in behind um, or is going to get kind of because you've got that little zig. He's going to get some pretty solid spacing uh, on this play. The next thing that you're going to notice with this is this slant route. Um, the slant route to Godwin is one of those routes that is always open at some point, right? So just as he's coming back in, just snap it. And you'll see right here, as he gets across, right there, he's, you know, right, he, he, he's open. Now, again, one thing you have to understand with this is most people aren't going to run uh, cover two stock on you, right? There's going to, there's going to be some. There's going to be some changes, right? You're going to see something like this, right? You could see something like this. And maybe a double flat on this side because they know that you're going to run some kind of corner route. And then their user is going to kind of be in the middle of the field, and he's going to take that post. Essentially what you're doing, 
with this route combination is you're forcing their user to choose who he's going to take. Is he going to take the slant or is he going to take the, um, you know, the other routes? And what you'll see here is a slant comes across and that flat route or that zig is going to pull everything to the outside if you have to do that drop back. So that's stick. Um, another way to run stick is simply to take what, what I would recommend doing is I love this little shoot flat out of a motion. So like if you're motioning Godwin to the left and he happens to be on a shoot flat, I think that's going to be effective. So then what I would just do is take your tight end R1 and put him on a curl. Take Gronk and put him on a post route or a crossing route. I think maybe a crossing route would be a little bit better, but either one of those two, motion Godwin out, and now he's on a little shoot flat. If they're not playing hard flats, you can take that motion snap. Um, you can take that motion snap. So, for example, let's say they're, let's say they're, you know, and again, for them to not play hard flats on this scheme, I think is going to be a mistake. Most people you play will probably play hard flats, but what you'll notice here, no hard flat, and um, whoops, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. What you'll notice right here is, okay, they don't have a hard flat. So I can hit him right there, click on, and I'm able to get up field. Because of the motion, and par partially because of the motion, and partially because you're running him to the wide side of the field. Now what about Tampa 2? You notice in Tampa 2, for whatever reason, the alignment kind of changes a little bit, right? Um, but what you'll see here is... This little hitch, unfortunately, what I really wish he would do is I wish he would go as like a as like a little zig or a little not not a little zig, little out and sit route. Um, unfortunately, he just stops and he put, turns it into a hitch. What I want him to do is go and turn it into that little out and sit route. I think that'd be a little bit more effective. But against Tampa two, um, oftentimes what's going to happen is that vertical hook will be there for just a second. And then you'll see here it's going to open that, that it's going to hold that vertical hook is going to hold out on the hitch. And so then what your next option is going to be is you're going to be able to hit the route to the tight end. Obviously, if they drop back on the tight end, you know, you're not going to be able to hit that. Then you would want to obviously take your vertical hook. I'm getting some wicked pressure out of this uh, Tampa 2. I think it's just because of practice mode. But what you'll see here. Oops. Again, you're just you're running a simple little. I mean, it's very easy. I mean, it's just a very simple play. Um, and if you wanted to, you could take your back and put him on a little, you know, little option. Um, but I'd recommend e either putting him on a ghost route or putting him on, you know, some kind of like block and release late route, just just so you can have good protection. Uh, but what you'll see here is that post route is going to come open, and then you can air truck your way, you know, up to up your up your up the field. So that's that's stick, um, and that's my favorite way to run it. And the primary reason is because it's just against us. It's just mainly, and the main reason you're running it is I just feel like the out route is really effective from stick, a little bit more effective than a hot routed out route uh, against man to man. And so if they run man, you just got that nice quick read, and you know you're going to get 15 to 20 yards if they if they want to stay in man coverage. The next way I want to show you is drive Y corner. Um, this play is interesting. It's got some different things that you could do with it. Um, and, and really, really what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage. This little route to the back right here is really good. It's a snap throw um, type of route. You snap, you let him run out a little bit. Now, one thing you can do with wing flex close, not a lot of people, I don't see a lot of people doing this. Maybe it's just because they want the run threat. But you can motion your back to the left here and put him in this little um, kind of flip position. Um, this is really good against man coverage. You see, it's just he gets out there a little bit faster, and he's going to be able to get out against, um, you know, against any any type of uh, issue that he's going to face. So that's another that's an option. You could also motion him out to the right here and run him, and you'll see it's going to turn into kind of like a little mesh route. He's going to serve as a little pick pick player for for Godwin's route. So that's some some options that you have. But realistically, what I like to do from this. Uh, drive Y corner. The first thing I like to do is I like to take it and simply turn it into um, kind of a similar to our first setup. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out, put Braid on a zig, and I'm going to motion him back in. 
And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Chris Godwin. I'm just going to put him on a vertical route, a streak route. Very simple. The back side with Mike Evans, I'm putting him on a uh, hitch route or a zig, uh, but, but typically a hitch. And then I'm going to leave the back on his little flat. And my snap read is once again going to be these zigs. If he gets that inside position, I'm going to throw it and take my three to five yards. I will throw that every single time just because I want to keep the defense honest. Right? I want to keep the defense honest. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do here, so again, I get that motion out. They might think, oh, he's running verticals, which we will come back to that. That's a play that we will use here in just a minute. But you'll see that you motion something over like this. I snap it while he's moving, uh, but basically your your corner route. Unfortunately, it doesn't get over the cloud flat and the cover two. I really wish it did. It doesn't. But basically, if they're if they're not point, you know, if they're not paying attention, which some people won't. Some people will literally like they'll just run like cover two and call it good on that left side on that right side. And we're gonna show you why that's a really really bad strategy um, here in just a minute. But what you'll see here is your zig, if they're not playing hard flats, he's going to be wide open. And so then you ask the question, well, what if they're playing hard flats and what if they're playing cloud flats? So what if they're playing Mabel coverage is really what you're asking. And um, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So we got cloud flats. And I'm going to put that linebacker on the right side of the screen into a hard flat uh, coverage. And what you'll see here, again, I want to motion this guy out, put him on a zig, motion him back in, take God one, put him on the streak. You can leave Evans on the dig. I just like hitches. I like just little quick, simple things underneath here. But what you'll notice is you can low ball this corner route if they Mabel coverage. You can just hit it right up the seam. You say, well, what if they use with that? Uh, well, then you are probably going to have either your back or your hitch on the back side. Um, and they're likely to go from that point to try to catch something over the middle, whether you're putting Evans on a streak or not. And you can do that. You can always... Um, you know, just kind of have a, a little streak option. Another way that I like to run this specific play is I like to take Mike Evans, put him on a zig. Um, I like to take Chris Godwin and put him on a slant. And then what I'm going to do with Gronkowski is I'm going to leave him on his route. And basically I'm going to take Cameron Brake and I'm going to put him on a streak. And I'm going to take my back and put him on a little, uh, little swing route. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because what this is going to allow me to do is just kind of have something that looks very similar. But now you've got a really nice little two-man read between these two things. You see that this zig, because he doesn't get pressed, he's going to get really, really good separation against the man-to-man -man coverage. So that's another version uh, of this play that I like to do. All right, PA cross, uh, PA cross switch. Uh, I really like this play all in all. There's a lot of things you can do with it. I actually like to keep the play action on, but you don't have to. If you just want to put that back on a shoot flat, uh, you can. Uh, we're going to keep this motion consistent right here, but this time and we're going to put braid on this little, um, this little route right here. But what you'll see that I'm going to do with Gronkowski is you have a couple of different things that you could do. The first thing that I would recommend is just simply putting him on a corner route, or you could put him on a post route or you can put him on a cross it's kind of up to you what i'm going to recommend because of where um where these routes are all going to end up once we do our little motion i'm going to recommend to put gronkowski on a crossing route and then what i'm going to simply do is i'm going to put godwin on a hitch route and i'm going to motion him out and then i'm just going to motion him back in and snap while he's in motion motion snapping those hitch routes will help them they're going to be unbumpable against man coverage um so if they're you know if they're not playing discipline ball you're going to be able to get that that separation now one thing that you could do if you wanted to is you could turn that mode it could also be a motion zig and then you could block the running back that's another option uh for you one last thing that i would recommend is you can also try to streak the tight end i would wait to streak him for our four verticals concept but these are just like simple underneath things. And like I said, you're going to bring uh, Godwin here on this little hitch. And you could even put him on a smart right hitch. But I just think it works better with the spacing. If he's just on this little, little subtle hitch, you want him to be in motion because you just want it to kind of sit. And what you'll notice is a pretty significant man switch is going to occur if you can time the motion snap right. If you can, if you can time the motion snap right on this hitch, 
this um, the crosser and then you've got your zig here we'll get that zig on the field when he comes back in what you'll see here on the left side is you're gonna motion guy one out and then when you motion him back in you'll notice that there's a little bit and you're gonna get him right there and if you watch um, you know basically both both of those crossing routes if you throw them on the right timing will get open and you will occasionally get that middle linebacker to basically have to you'll you'll get a switch between these two is effectively what's going to happen but this play i wouldn't say i run a ton um it's just mainly something that i kind of mix in to everything else and we'll just save time a little bit and put him on a flat but right there right as he's coming in there that's really what we're looking at now what you can do with the hitch and this is why I like it. I like it being so close to the line of scrimmage. I really do. Because what you could do with the hitch is let's say that they play man coverage and let's say that the play kind of breaks down, right? What what do you do when the play breaks down? Well, what you could do with that hitch is you could playmaker him. And because he's so close to the line of scrimmage, his playmaker is going to be very significant. Now, obviously, if they're running man-to-man -man coverage, I would recommend hitting the zig, the crosser, or those deep dig routes one of those is going to come open but again get him right in here and let's say the play breaks down just basically and then i can start to playmaker this guy open basically you know and get him uh separation and then against zone what you'll find is this little quick hitch is really really effective one last thing i want to show you on this against man to man and that is with this hitch route right here when you motion if you want to snap him right here you can also do that, and he's going to be a low ball against against that man coverage. The one thing you want to make sure that you do, if you're going to do something like that, is I would recommend wheeling the running back because you really got to get him out of the way. Um, so either swinging him or wheeling him. You want him to be like back. You don't want him to be on a flat because if he's on a flat, he's too close to this. But this little hitch right here, this little motion out hitch, I think it's really, really effective. The one thing you do is you got to wait for that linebacker on that right to come to come across the play. Um, but again, just something very, I mean, this is relatively simple, but they're pressed man a line here, and you'll see he's going to sit. Because of the motion snap, it really gives him some separation. And I think, you know, again, you can motion him left and snap it if you wanted to. You could also motion him back inside and snap it. It just depends on what you're trying to keep consistent. Um it really does just depend on what you're trying to keep consistent within this play. Okay, so that's this play. Um, I won't spend too much time on this against zone coverage. It's basically just, you know, I mean, you're going to either have your hitch, your crosser, or your dig. And most of the time, you're going to have one of either. But I love how this cross, this little hitch just sits. It's going to sit at about a yard, maybe two yards um, in depth. And so even if they uh, run cover two, and I just want to show this real quick. Even if they run these coverages that are trying to kind of stop this, what you'll notice on this little hitch here is it's going to really leave a big void in behind it for this crosser, and you're going to be able to uh, to really threaten them. One last thing I did want to recommend for this, let me just show you this really quickly. These are cover two, and we're going to kind of manipulate this vertical hook a little bit on this. When you motion him back in, you'll notice that because he's kind of delayed, um, effectively what's going to happen is it should give him uh, a little bit better separation against those vertical hooks. They're going to play vertical, and then there you see, because it's it's so delayed, um, they're not going to be able to, they're not going to choose to come down on the hitch because the, ment the, the computer is not reading that he's even on a route yet. The next play I want to go over is clown post. Um, this is really good against man. Uh, basically what you're going to do, you're going to motion Godwin out. And when he cuts to the outside right there, you're going to throw it with an outside pass lead. And what I like to do is low ball it. And this, this specific pass lead is really, really effective for um, for man-to-man. -man. Uh, whoops, I'm sorry. I ran the wrong play. It's called clown post. And what you have on the right side, real quick, just so you can see this, you see that I have a corner route. I really don't like this route on the play. I feel like it gets in the way. So what I like to do is simply do the zig route again. But what I'll do with that tight end is I'll either put him on a curl or I'll just streak him. Right? One of the two. 
and then I have this motion out to the left snap right when he goes left that's when I'm throwing it you see you get that instant um, that instant catch right out of that now what's nice about this is you've got a nice little block and release out route to the back that gets really good separation against man-to-man -man coverage as well so you know what you can do off of this you still have your zig that you're looking at the snap okay that's not there okay now look this deep crosser typically will beat man-to-man -man out of this formation out of this play you're, you're typically going to be able to beat man with that receiver so you have that um, obviously you want to have you'll be leveraging your zig I would recommend because of um, how compressed this is you know with this motion out this is really a man true and true I mean it's a man beating play um, again low ball right there right on that 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 first outside cut of the double move now I do want to show you how this can be a two window route so let's say that they're you know maybe they drop a zone over that side or they do something to try to take that route away on that cut well if he once if you have time once he cuts to the inside he will beat man to man as well so it's a two window route you can hit him on either or of those points but that's that's a clown post again clown post um, against man to man now what I want to do is I want to show you this play against zone coverage and what you'll see is these little curls these little zigs these little quick routes um, are gonna start to really put some stress on them because they got to be playing um, you see how I can throw this in the, in the in the what I like about this is I can throw this route to the left against any zone in the game um, including including uh, cover two so let me show you cover two real quick and what you'll notice on this left side with Godwin when I motion him out he's gonna come in a very unique little window right here right there that's a low ball just a snap low ball get the ball out get it out and go uh, now I want to show you one little adjustment that they might do um, to try to tr to try to deter that uh, and that's just taking that slot corner and basically putting him into a zone and you see how he still goes up with the crosser because of the motion it really forces that guy to go so the vertical hook any yellow zone is going to go with that crossing route pretty much every time um, and then you're going to be able to come underneath it now let's say they run something like and I don't get a lot of cover four I get a lot of cover three and cover two when I'm under center uh, most people won't run cover four just because it's not necessarily sound uh, with all the quick routes we're running what you see here is the same exact thing just that quick that quick snap throw it out there and because it's um, because it's inverting it's slicing to the inside at the snap of the ball you're going to notice that like let's say they just put a hard flat out there this is just a hard flat out of cover four you see how that hard flat doesn't really play it um and let me show you this out of like a cover three um just to give you the best alignment possible so here we've got cover three we're playing hard flats and we've got underneath coverage with that hook curl and i just want you to watch what happens here to uh chris god whoops i want to be in the right play though so let's say you know I'm, I'm Chris Godwin here, clown post, motion him out, snap right here, and you'll see see how see how that flat just kind of drifts out there. It doesn't hang with him because he's on an inside and invert. And so what they're going to have to do with this zone's really not going to stop stop that snap throw. I mean it's really not. Um, you know what they might do is they might do something like this where they're maybe in Tampa two. Um, you know this would be like an all out attempt to try to stop it. And, and we're really, I mean, they're bringing the zone coverage like heavy out here on the snap throw. Um, and what you'll see is, okay, okay, they've done that. But then look, on the double move, he's wide open against like a cover two style defense. So those are some things, you know, just to kind of be aware of uh, as far as that flow coverage, uh, flow coverage of that. The other thing that you can do off of this if you wanted to, if you wanted to really make this like a tough, uh, a tough play on this clown post is you could take your running back and put him on a shoot flat route and you're still going to get that high low but now you know you've really opened up more space because that running back has really going to take a lot of the zones with him um, so for example if, if they were in that cover three again and this is hard flat coverage and a purple zone on that same side and i just want you to watch clown post 
this little shoot flat to the back. And you're just going to basically wait. And you'll see he's going to come right open. Now, as far as like a defensive lineman, you know, again, if they have a really good ability there uh, playing that ball, you know, typically that defensive lineman is going to be in a, in a hard flat. So I do want to show that as well uh, really quickly. So typically you're going to see something like this. And you see how he's going to come right underneath it. So that's kind of the typical look from Crown Post. As far as the right side from Crown Post, um, it's not too complicated. You know, basically we're just running essentially PA counter go. We just have a backfield kind of shoot route tag uh, within this play. So what you'll notice is, you know, against zone coverage, your crossing route uh, will typically get separation against both man and zone coverage within this play. The routes to the tight end um, are going to help. Now do remember that these are, um, let me just go cover two real quick. These are just standard cloud flaps, right? Um, zone dropping will ultimately stop uh, Mike Evans' route if they wanted to, but obviously you're gonna have other things open. So if they run, if they run those clouds on the outside, the clouds from cover two typically do a good job on that specific crossing route. So you're not gonna have that window. If you have a hot route master, if you want to hot route him to a different crossing route, you'll see that this one goes a little bit deeper than the other one does. And so if they're in cover two, what you'll see from this right here is you know, he'll get wide open against that cover two. So you do have that option. And then the last play I want to talk about on this segment, and then we're going to go into some other things uh, here in just a moment, is four verticals. This is kind of what we've been doing all of this for, is really some window dressing for this play. Uh, and what you'll see here is now what we're going to be able to do is I like to take the tight end on the right side here and put him on a streak. And then on this back side, you could kind of do a lot of different things with this. It depends on which four verticals you're trying to attack. And what you'll notice here is against cover two, uh, this route to the tight end, Cameron, uh, whoops, I'm sorry. This route to the tight end is going to be effective on both sides of the field. So you're going to be able to throw this tight end route wide open. And it's going to look like that same motion from both plays. So, for example, let's say they're in cover two. One of the things that I like to do is I would take this back side and I would probably do some different things, some simple little things that's going to help it. So, for example, because I have slot apprentice on that left side outside receiver, I might put him on a crossing route, right, a deep cross. And then from there, I might take Mike Evans and I might just put him on a, you know, underneath route, maybe a drag. Very simple, right? But what you'll notice is now, and this is primarily for cover two, so bear with me a little bit, and we'll get to cover three. What you'll see is this route on the outside will get over this guy, and you can throw that ball. So that that now gives you a nice little option um, from this from this formation to beat cover two. Now let's say we wanted to run that same concept. But this time we want to run it to the left side of the field, not the right side of the field. So now what I would do is I would come over here. I'd motion Cameron Braid out. Okay. And then from here, I would take him and I would put him on a, um, I'd actually put him on a slant route and then I would motion him back in. And I would leave Gronkowski on his vertical route. And then I would streak Mike Evans. So you have these, these compressed streaks, basically, two streaks, and then you have a slant and a little uh, little out route underneath against man-to-man. -man. And what you'll notice is, let's say they run cover two, this left side's going to be wide open. You're going to be able to fit that into that left side all day long. Um, cover two is not going to stand a chance on you. Uh, with, these, with these specific routes from four verticals, I think these are some of the easiest ways to beat cover two in the game because – the middle safeties have to respect the deep, uh, the deep streaks, and so you can run these in without them. So, for example, let's say you were facing, you know, one one other thing you could do with this is you could take your tight end on the left, put him on a post, and then you could basically do something like this, right? And that way you've got your post check down against man if you need it. You got your back, but you've got your vertical stretches uh, for zone coverage. The same theory is going to apply to cover three. 
So uh, cover three, a lot of people like to deep half their zones on the outside uh, to, to help them from not getting beat. And I actually want to show you what's going to happen if they don't. So let's say they don't deep half. All right, so let's, let me show you that same setup from um, that same setup from the last play. So if I motion Godwin to the left side here, what you'll see is against cover three, you'll be able to throw this route to Mike Evans fairly consistently. If you can't hit Mike Evans for whatever reason, you will typically be able to hit Godwin. That's why I actually like to look to Godwin first. Um, you're going to have one of those two guys because they're, you're just overrunning the numbers. The numbers can't defend it. So I can get this ball out here on a snap throw. You know, Again, if they're not playing hard spots, tech, even if they're playing hard spots, and this is what I want you to see here, they can't play cover two because we're going to beat it over the cloud. They can't really play cover three because of what I'm about to show you. I'm going to take this guy, Minter, and I'm going to put him on a hard flat. I'm going to pass commit. And what you'll notice is it's not going to work as good as you'd think. Because of the space that of the formation, that hard flat ain't doing nothing. It's not going to do anything for the defense. What they're going to have to do is they're going to have to take this, this slot corner, right? And they're going to have to have him on a hard flat maybe. And now let's test, test it and, and, and see what's going to happen here. And the reason that's significant is because it's going to force them to play a specific type of coverage over the top within a cover three. But here we go. Look, our hard outside, you see he's still able to get out there. It's that snap throw. I would highly recommend having Gunslinger or Pass the Elite on your quarterback if you're going to try this. Um, but now what you'll see is, okay, well, now let's try it like this. Then we're going to Mabel. We're really trying to take away this left side. This is going to – obviously, you're going to have your streak wide open. They're going to have to use her the streak, right? But right here, again, snap, get it out there. You see that right there? Isn't that something? No zone guards it. Because the, the play is not designed for him to follow and zone coverage. Okay? So very, very solid. And the same thing applies on the right side. So what you'll notice from here, I think I just audible the standard cover three. Watch this tight end. No one guards it. No. no the, the hard flats not getting out there. So if they're in if they're in any zone coverage, now man coverage, to be fair. Man coverage on this slot receiver will stop it. See there, I can't throw it. There's no window to throw it. He stops me. That's all they can do. That's all they can do to stop it is man him up. Now, what if the man coverage, you might be asking, well, what if the man coverage came from the linebacker? You know, could that work? Because that might be really good for some of the other things we're going to do here in just a moment. Man coverage from the linebacker won't work because he doesn't have the space. He can't, he can't get out there fast enough. So, you have that on both sides. You have the cover two beater. And then real quick, I want to show you, like, if they run cover three, again, if they deep half or not, it's it's kind of irrelevant because you're still going to have your snap, your snap throws. But, again, you'd be something like this, motion them out. And this, you see that this inside void is going to be wide open here, and I can kind of get that out there. What I'd recommend doing is fading Mike Evans. You just want him to kind of go – you know, it, it's really more of a, a good read, in my opinion, against cover three press. Like if they're if they're pressing out of a cover three, this thing's going to be money. Unfortunately, with the way that this, um, um, with the way that the zones are playing out of this, if the safety's on the if the cover three, um, if the deep safety's on the play side, you are going to have a little bit more of an issue with this. But what you'll see is this left side guy should go to the left, and you can kind of hit these seams. The seams will open up once you go underneath more because what's going to happen is they're not just going to be able to play cover three necessarily. They're going to be playing cover three Mabel on you. Um, and you're going to see something like this right here. Now you have seams. Every, I mean, you have you have every seam wide open. So, you know, if the safeties and the, this is where like this setup right here is really, really good. And you could pass me that tight end open for a one play touchdown against that cover three. So that's a little bit about four verticals. I really like this play. I really like to kind of, uh, I really like to backside across like a, a, a crossing route or a post route 
uh, essentially just to kind of, you know, kind of keep with everything. Because if they do run man coverage, then I'm either going to have my curl or I'm going to have my post uh, to be able to hit that. So that's four verticals. Um, I want to jump out. I want to grab a couple more plays where, and, and, and show you a couple more things. If you guys have not already joined my community Discord, you can do that. That link is in this, the um, in the description of this video. Now, we haven't gotten to Smash yet, and Smash is one of those plays I actually really like from this playbook. Um, so we'll spend some time in Smash. And I also have um, a few things that you can do from pretty much any play in the playbook um, that will be very, very effective as well. So we'll come out and smash real quick. So the first thing with smash that I like is the fact that you get this nice tight end crossing route here. And so one of the things that I really like to do is I will take um, Chris Godwin and I will put him on a crossing route, a drag. The, the tight end on the right side is going to go onto a um, more than likely he's going to go on a curl route and then the back on the left side is always going on a shoot flat in this specific predicament and what you'll notice is again against man because you have outside leverage you'll always have outside leverage from this formation to mike evans that corner route is going to beat man every single time they run man coverage throw the corner out wide open every time so you have that the next thing that you're going to be able to do from this um, again, with this motion, with this motion back of Godwin, you're going to notice that he's going to beat man fairly effectively from a drag, and and you're going to pretty much be able to count on it because you're motioning him, you're getting him unbumpable against man coverage, um, and that's going to help a little bit. The next thing that you're going to be able to hit against man coverage is your tight end. Um, your tight end. You'll see here he's going to come all the way across. At that point, he's decided to run a drag. And against the zone, he's going to actually settle up into a curl, which is really, really nice from this uh, from this formation. We'll show you how it's even nicer with a couple of motions that will, a couple um, of other motions that we'll do. So again, motion them out, motion them back in, and then now this time against man coverage, you see, okay, I can hit my curl on my tight end, low ball, pass lead inside, and aggressive catch that. So that's man coverage. I mean, pretty much every route beats man. What I really like about zone coverage, if, if you're looking at this setup against zone coverage. With this motion back in, you're gonna have a lot of really good things against zone. Um, you're gonna you're gonna be able to. You'll be surprised, but you will be able to because of the motion snaps, and because of where people are coming um, and going. You're going to have a pretty decent shot of completing this corner route against pretty much every coverage. Right in that pocket, that's the cover two. Very simple. He goes right in the pocket. Now let me show you. Um, let me show you cover four. I think cover four is probably going to do best against this, but it's still not going to be that sound. And you'll see that corner route is going to get open. Um, the motion back in, and now you'll see um, right there the corner route did do a good, or the the curl flat did do a good job of taking the corner, just kind of flowing with him. But you're able to hit the running back. Uh, for a fairly a fairly effective game. I just want to show this one more time. If you just watch here, pass lead right in there, you see you can kind of fit that in with that corner. The one issue with it is, unfortunately, because of that specific drop at 20, I think it does a little bit better job. Um, it's hard to pull. Let me see if I can pull him out here. Here I can pull him out a little bit more, but you see he can kind of jump back in on, it, because he's flowing coverage. So... You know that's 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 the one thing that you got to kind of watch out for from a cover four. Um, as far as cover three goes, you'll see right here cover three, and you're able to hit that. You see that it comes down more on the back from a cover three uh, than a cover four. Okay. So that's kind of the first setup for smash. The second setup for smash is one that I really really like. I'm gonna curl the tight end. And then I'm going to motion Godwin. Uh, I like to take the back on this play and just put him on a swing route to the right. And I'm going to motion Godwin to the right, and I'm going to snap him right about here. And he's just going to be a little check down. Now, he's a snap throw. You can throw this ball as soon as the ball is snapped, and you will find a lot of success. You will find a lot of success on this play right here. Snap, throw it out there, and he's going to catch it. And pretty much every time, just make sure you're hitting secure catch. 
So as soon as you throw it, I would just hold X. You don't have to use or catch this route. You just need to make sure that he secure catches it. So he gets this basket catching animation right there. That's what we're looking for. Just that little, you know, kind of protect the ball and get down. You'll notice that against zone coverage, it works exactly the same. You're going to pull the flats and you're going to pull the yellows with these two other routes. And that route's going to be wide open. It's a quick snap, throw it out there, and it's going to work pretty much every time for you. Now, what if they started, you know, shading coverage and dropping people and, you know, what, 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 what then, right? What then? Well, in my opinion, if you get this wide enough, you're going to be able to hit this against everything. You're literally going to be able to hit against everything because the back is going to get out there right at the point at which you're going to throw this. That back is going to be shifting to that outside. And the flat's not going to, you know, he's going to want to pass him off to the vert hook. So what you'll see here, again, get this out here right about here. Low ball. You don't want to hit the lineman. But as long as we didn't hit the lineman right there, that would have been a completion. If they drop defensive linemen, it's not going to help them. Right here, I'm dropping every defensive lineman into a yellow zone. And what you'll notice is they're all going to cover either one of the two tight ends. So right there. You see it's a snap throw, automatic three to five yards. Not, no way they can stop it. Um, the one thing they can do, and I just want to show it to you so you know, is they could, um, and they can't man him up either, which is, um, which is actually really interesting. They can't man him up by this guy. They'd have to man him up by uh, a linebacker from this play. So you go to smash, put that curl out there. They man him up by that linebacker. And what you'll see is that linebacker will sit on it, as you can see right there. So just watch for that. That will be the one thing they can do to take this away. But that's going to open up your tight end right over the middle of the field. You'll notice here that your tight end, either one of them, should be running wide open um, on this play right here. Get about here. Okay, they jet out. Okay, we'll just take that right there. So that's really smash. And, and honestly, that's that's kind of it for smash. But I love this play. This is probably the play that I call, um, a t I just call this play a ton. Um, you know, there's an, another version of it that you could do um, where you could take great and put him on a whip. And then you could take Godwin and bring him backside on this route right here. And you want it to be snapped right about here. And uh, you'll be surprised at how well, you know, how well those routes will work against zone coverage. So that's single back wing flex close passing. I wanted to give you one last thing that you could do out of, of smash in particular. Um, I could take, you know, I could kind of turn this into mesh post, right? So I could take Gronk and put him on a streak. Put that back on a little uh, little wheel um, or a little swing route to the left. And then I could put Godwin on a post because I went slot apprentice on him. So I can motion him across. And this little post route right here will beat man-to-man -man coverage every single time. So don't ever underestimate the power of some of those simple things that you can do. One of my favorite, um, one of my favorite little plays is to use clown po post because you can get two crossing routes, right? So I have a crossing route from Godwin and a crossing route from Mike Evans. And then all I'm going to do on the back side here is I'm just going to throw some curls and some, you know, some underneath flats on the field. But this right here is really a good setup. Just take Goblin, put him on a cross and motion him over. And this crossing route will just torch a lot of what people are going to try to do. And most people are not going to be expecting that specific crossing route. Another thing you could do, let's say you have tight end apprentice, right? Um, so you could go to a play like for verticals. Um, you could even go to a play like drive corner. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to put Mike Evans on a streak. You're going to put Chris Godwin on a corner route. You're going to put your tight end on a post route. And then your underneath tight end is just going to be on a little simple, you know, um, one of the things that I like to put him on would, you know, would be like a, a, a whip route or something like that. But then you can take your back, put him on a Texas route. And now you have, you know, a decent little combination right here um, that you can create. And it's a really, really nice little cover three beater. Uh, and what you'll see here, uh, if they run cover three, you know, you'll be able to hit your routes. What you'll also notice, like let's say, and I forgot to show you this from the verticals play, but let's say they run like cover two, or I'm sorry, cover three deep half, right? Let's say they do something like that on you. 
You can take Godwin, put him on a corner. Evans is going on that vertical streak. Motion them out. If they don't go, you see that corner doesn't go out there, they can just take that snap throw right there. One other thing you can also do um, is take, like on Smash, you can motion Godwin out. And if they're, if they're not playing... Um, if they're not playing hard flats like cover two, um, if they're not playing cover two, it's an automatic, uh, you know, it's an automatic route. If they are playing cover two, uh, when he curls up, you can off, you, you see it's 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 all right. Um, they're going to come down on that just so you know. But what you will have open in behind it from a cover two, uh, from a cover two standpoint, because this route takes a little bit of while and it's going to hold him really well. This route, he kind of is going to forget about the corner route on the backside. So, anyways, guys, um, let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you thought about these schemes. If you like this level of detail, I think you're going to love our text membership and some of our ebooks. But um, we've got more video content coming for you uh, tonight as well. Uh, our next video is going to go live at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll also have a video go live at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. So, uh, and then we will be live streaming tonight at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern uh, Time. But let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you think about this single back wing flex close. I think there's a lot of potential. Um, and, you know, I, I think just using these simple little plays, like something as simple as this right here, I think is very, very underrated. And I think it's very, very effective. You're going to be able to move the ball quick, be able to get the ball out of your hands quick, and mix it in with your runs. That's going to open more things up for your offense. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, be sure to text me if you have any Madden questions at all. My number is 812-216-3644. It's also in the description for you guys. And uh, we will see you guys in our next video at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern or 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time tonight.